All right, here we go. We have lesson uh, 5.3, which is uh, from Math 2, Unit 5, Lesson 3, proving that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So this is some home homework help for you guys, numbers 2, 5, 14, and 16. It says here, algebra for what values of x and y must a, b, c, d be a parallelogram? And we're going to start by trying to set some equations equal to each other. This is a situation where you might try it one way and find out that, oh, maybe that's not the best way to do it and might have to try a couple ways of figuring it out. A couple of things I look for are kind of what's the, what's the easiest way to approach this problem. I know that, in, for example, when I have a, a diagonal line of parallelogram, that the two parts, the corresponding parts, are going to be equal to each other. So one of the things that I notice, first of all here, is that if I look at this line AC, I could set an equation that was equal to, say, 2x plus 5 equals 11. By making this equation happen right away, I like it because there's only one variable in that equation, just the x. The other side of this, the BD line, I end up with, um, and I'll write that right here, I end up with 2x plus 4 equals y plus 4. I end up with two variables here, which means if I go ahead and solve this for, let's say, y, for example, um, I'm going to come back to this one. This is the one I really want to work with here. I would subtract 4 from both sides, 4 from both sides. I end up with 2x equals y. Well, if I use this, I'm going to have to plug a value in up here, but I don't have a y. So now I'm a little stuck. So I say my thought is always start with what's kind of easy to solve. We have a 2x plus 5 equals 11. If I subtract 5 from both sides, I end up with 2x equals 6, which then divide by 2, x equals 3. So once I know that x equals 3, it's a lot easier to then plug that value back into the other equation that I have. So if I plug this into the 2x plus 4 equals y plus 4, which is what I got from the BD value, and I plug the 3 right into here, I end up with 2 times 3, let me rewrite it over here for you, 2 times 3 plus 4 equals y plus 4. Because I have a 4 on both sides, I can go ahead and eliminate that. If you wanted to do minus 4 over here and minus 4, you can, same thing. And you end up with 2 times 3, which is 6, equals to y, I rewrite it, y equals 6. So. I like to look at this one first in this situation just because I can easily figure out what the value of y will be because there's only one variable when I set that equation up. It doesn't always work that way, but sometimes it does, and so it's nice to kind of take the easy approach there. When I look at number five, for example, I look here and I see I have a parallelogram. They're going to give me measurements of the inside angles. Remember from lesson 5.2, the angles that are across each other here are going to add up to be 180 degrees. So once again, I have a couple options. I could look at these two angles and recognize that, oh, look, 4x minus 20 plus a 10y is going to equal 180. That's one equation I could choose to use. But I can also look here and notice that, all right, I have an 8y plus a 10y is also equal to 180. When I look at the two equations, I decide which one's the easier to solve to get a value for one of my variables. I would say this one is because I only have one variable. When I combine like terms, 8y plus 10y is 18y for 180. Divide both sides by 18, and y ends up, ends up equaling 10. Now, that's a lot easier to get to that solution there for the value of y. I'm in good shape. Now, because I know y is 10, I can then use that number and add it back into my other equation that I have here and say that 4x minus 20 plus 10 times 10 equals 180. If I chose to go that route there. So 4x minus 20 plus 100 equals 180 by combining 10 times 10. I can combine like terms here, or my, my whole numbers, and 4x negative 20 and a positive 100 is going to be a positive 80 equals 180. And then I'm going to subtract 80 from both sides. Off it goes. 
and 4x equals 100, leaving me with x equals 25. Potentially, that's where I'm at there for number 5. I want to double check my work here because I'm not positive about that if that really is what I should end up. We said 4x minus 20 plus 10y equals 180. Plug the y in. I get 10 times 10 is 100. Everything is coming down, coming down, coming down. There looks good. 100 minus 20, 80. And that looks right, right there. So if x is 25, and I double check my work by plugging it back in here, this would be 4 times 25 is 100, minus 20 is 80, so that works there. And I can confirm that by putting my y value over here and saying 8 times 10, 8 times 10 is also 80, and these angles should correspond because they're opposite of each other. And so because those values do work out, I know I'm in good shape, and we're set to go for number 5. So, Again, looking for the easier way to get one variable by itself before I move on to the next one there. When it talks about number 6, 7, 8, 9, can you prove these things? I'm not going to go over that right now. Um, I want you to go ahead and make sure you ask your teacher about that. Look in the book for this here. This comes down to your theorems and understanding the reasonings for why this works. Why do these two sections equal each other? Why do these two sections equal each other? What's, what's the theorem that proves that to be true? Why do these angles equal each other? Why do these parts? Make sure you know those things. Make sure you know why this adds up to 180. Just like when you go to the next page here, and this is kind of the key for this unit, guys, when you look at number 11, and it wants you to develop a proof about why these equal and why is the parallelogram, these pieces in the here and in here that are missing, it's real important for you to work with your teacher to determine why this is so because you're going to find that this type of question will be on your unit test at the end of unit 5, and you want to make sure you know all the reasons why. So this is something you just have to memorize and learn so you can be able to explain that on your test for what are the reasons for why these things are true. And let's move down here to a couple more examples of just the problems themselves. Looking at number 14, same type of problem like we had on the, on the front side of the page, we're going to make these values equal to each other to determine the value of x or the value of y. So you have to decide kind of what you want to do. I'm going to go into number 14 right here, and I have two equations. I can have y, if I do the ac value here, I can say that y plus 14 equals, so this part here, equals 3y minus 22. So that's one equation I can set up. I can also set up the equation for this line, db, and say that 4x plus 2 equals 2y plus 2. Again, I have two equations here, and I want to get one variable by itself so that I can substitute it in for the other using the substitution method there. Because this one has y values only, I think I'm going to use this one for now. So for me, I would subtract a y, subtract a y. So I end up with 14 equals 2y minus 22. I would add 22 to both sides to end up with 36 equals 2y. Divide both sides by 2 and find out that, what do you know, y equals 18. Now because I know the value of y, I can plug that into my second equation here and solve for x. So let's do that. We get 4x plus 2 equals 2 times 18 plus 2. And continue, 4x plus 2 equals 2 times 18 is 36 plus 2, which is also known as 40. And 4x plus 2 equals 40. I subtract 2 from both sides. And they end up with 4x equals 38. And then let's see where we are here. 36. Oops, I'm so sorry. Apologize there. 36 plus 2 is not 40, it is 38, so sorry about that guys, 38, and then 38 minus 2 is 36, so correct that there, then I can divide both sides by 4, and x equals 9, I got a little bit of hurry with my computation there, but now I have a value for y, and a value for x, 
and we're good to go on number 14. Let's look at one more together before we wrap up this lesson and homework help here. Look at number 16. Number 16, they're pointing, the arrow's pointing to this angle right here and this angle right here. These are what I believe are called alternate interior angles, which are going to be equal to each other. So let's set up the two equations we're working with. I can say that 2x plus 4 equals this equation, 7y minus 3. I can also say that these lines on the top and bottom of my parallelogram are also congruent lines because it's a parallelogram. Right? It tells me here it's a parallelogram. There you go. So I can say 3x plus 3 equals 6x minus 18. Looking for the easier one to get an initial value for, I have two variables in this equation and only one variable in this equation. So I'm going to go with the one variable equation to solve for x. I'll subtract 3x from both sides. We get 3 equals 3x minus 18. I'll add 18 to both sides and end up with 21 equals 3x. I solved that there. Divide both sides by 3 to separate the 3 from the x, and we end up with 7 equals x. Now that I have a value for x, I can take that value and plug it into my other equation to solve now for y. So I will do that 2 times 7 plus 4 equals 7y minus 3. 7 times 2 is 14 plus 4 equals 7y minus 3. I end up with those combined together to give me 18 equals 7y minus 3. I'll add 3 to both sides and 21 equals 7y. To get the 7 apart from the y, I divide both sides by 7 and come to the conclusion that y equals 3. So those are my two answers for the values of x and y. And again, I looked for the easier equation to solve first and then plugged that value in that I discovered into my other equation to solve for the second variable. So I hope that helps, and I hope you're ready for the next lesson. Have a great day.